Hi everyone, welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love channel. I am Nicole and I'm so grateful to have you here with me today. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Thank you all so much for all of your love, support, comments, likes, shares. Thank you all for just everything. Thank you for the donations. I love you all so much. I'm so grateful for all of the donations, the, um, the decks everything just thank you all for all of your love we're back with another pick a card today this pick a card will be about what are they telling their friends about you what is your person now this is going to be more so of a romantic nature okay that's like the intention but you know you take whatever resonates for you but what is your person telling their friends about you so we have pile one pile two pile three pile one Pile two and pile three. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. I will see you in your reading. Timestamps will be linked below. Bye. Hi, Val One. Welcome to your reading. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're feeling great. Shout out to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Thank you all so much. I love you all so much. Hope you all are feeling great. Welcome to the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click. Oh my gosh. Click the subscribe button and join the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. All right. So we're going to get right into it. What are they telling their friends about you? What do you need to know? Pow one. What are they telling their friends about you? Pow one. Pow one. Pow one, please. Spirit, what are they telling their friends about you? Pow one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, this energy is tasty. Okay. Okay, pow one. We have the sun. Judgment in reverse. Side note, if you could hear my girls, sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, they're here, you know, work from home, so, you know. Knight of Wands. The Tower in reverse. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Knight of Pentacles. The Lovers. And then we have the Emperor. Get this camera right. Got a new camera. So I'm working out the kinks here. Okay, two of wands in reverse, bottom of the deck. All right, so let me just see. Okay, Paul one, bear with me. Learning curve here. Okay, so we have passion. We have very soon. We have trust. Okay, and then we have ambition, 39. And this is Nike or Nikai. Yes, Nike. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, we also have the future. 47. So 39 reduces to the number 12 or the number 3. 47 reduces to the number 11 or the number 2. We also have Metis Wisdom. And then we have Gaia Earth. Okay. 
All right, Pawan. So let's go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I just want to make sure you guys can see these cards. All right. So Pawan, let me just start while I'm rearranging the cards. So I see here, it's like a story here. So just ride with me. You know, if it's not resonating for you, just go to another pile. But um, so the storyline that I see here is, you know, your person, um, I think that when you came on your person's radar, they were either in a committed situation or, you know, they had a, like a lot going on with work or, um, yeah, like something like that. Like they were just busy. They were tied up. But they, when they first saw you, they automatically felt a, like a, um, a pull toward you, okay? It was like some type of like a pull, a connection. They felt it. They felt it deep within. They saw you as a person um, that you just had like a light. You had like a brightness to you. You had a glow. You were shining, I'm hearing. You know, you were shining differently than a lot of people. You know, you you definitely caught their attention. You definitely, um, you sparked their interest immediately. But I just feel like it was a situation that, you know, again, when you first met this person, this person could have been with someone or they could have just, you know, had like a lot of family issues or it was just a lot going on in their life, maybe with work, you know. Like I said, family, work. It could have been all of the above, honestly, for some of you. You know, you take what resonates here. But I do see that this person had a lot going on when you came into their awareness. It's almost like right person, wrong time. Although, you know, if you believe everything is meant to be, everything happens for a reason, then, you know, you may be like, well... Not necessarily. So, you know, you take, again, you take a resonates for that. But at the time when you, you know, you came in this person's awareness, they were not able to make an offer. They were not able to come toward you. They were not able to give you what they felt you deserve. You know, when this person first met you, they automatically respected you. They automatically felt like you were very grounded, very abundant, very beautiful. They saw you as a person that was just gorgeous, I'm hearing. You know, you took their breath away. Whether you know this or not, I do feel for some of you, you know, you may not know this. You may, um, for some of you, I feel like, you know, you may just have just met this person or this person has just come back. It could have been a situation for some of you that, you know, this person told you at the time, hey, you know, like you may have talked to this person a little bit and then they ghosted or it was a situation where, when you met them, they kind of told you that they were busy with a lot of things and, you know, it wasn't like it was a situation where, you know, they were just like, hey, I can't talk to you. But it was kind of like it just faded away, like you both may have been busy or just wasn't the right time. So I do feel like, you know, this person may not have really expressed their feelings or their desires or how they really felt about you. OK, I, I'm getting that vibe here. And it could have been a situation, again, it could have been in a commitment and they didn't tell you, or it could have been family issues or again, work, it was just too busy and they just didn't have the time to devote to you and possibly building something with you at that time. And, you know, they felt like you deserve some type of commitment and they just could not give it to you at that time. So, Paul one, what I'm hearing and seeing here is, is that this person feels like you forced them to, you and just your presence has forced them to wake up, wake up and find more of themselves, find out who they're really meant to be, figure out what they're meant to do in this world on earth here. This connection has made them, for some of you I'm hearing, shaking them to the core. This person completely feels like this connection has shaken their whole world to the core and it's broken down parts of their consciousness, those self-limiting beliefs, and it's made them, again, realize more who they are, what they're meant to do, and their place 
in this world. So this could be definitely a spiritual connection. This could be a high level connection, okay? Because it does seem here that probably both of you have had barriers and things that you had to deal with in order to begin to close the gap to come closer together. I am seeing that. So what they're telling their friends about you, this person definitely has romantic feelings for you because with the Knight of Cups and the passion here, not only is this person feeling very romantic about you, they're also having a lot of passion passion about you, passion about building something with you. It's a lot of sexual energy here as well. So they're not sharing that part with their friends, but they're sharing the part of like, they feel like this sense of wonder and awe about you. They feel like they're telling their friends that they feel like you could be the one. Okay. They're telling their friends that it's like, it's a situation where they're not totally sure. There's still some doubt there. But if I were to put a percentage here, I would say that they're telling their friends they're 95% sure this is the real deal. Like, they're seeing you as this person who they could build with. They're seeing you as this person who they can, their future. Because we have the future here. We have Earth. Gaia, they see you as a very grounded person. For some of you, they want to have a child or children with you. They're telling their friends these things, that they want to begin a family. They see a family with you. They see you and them being able to build something, have a future. They're also telling their friends that they see you as a very wise person. You have a lot of wisdom. Not only do you have a lot of wisdom, but you have a lot of ambition. This not only... Is this something that they feel is very complimentary about you, that they're able to share with other people, but they also feel like this is something that's like something that they've always wanted. They've always wanted a person that could, because this person is very ambitious. You know, we see the emperor here. This person is in their power. I feel like this connection has pushed this person to become more in their power. And they felt like, you know, you inspire that. Whether you know this or not, you are inspiring this person to step more into their power. I feel like this person is, is, you know, because that emperor energy is here, this person is likely very ambitious as well. So they see you as a person who's ambitious. They're telling their friends this. They're telling their friends very complimentary, beautiful things about you. Like, oh, pal one, they're beautiful. They're handsome. They're ambitious. They're very wise. They have a lot of wisdom. They are very um, intelligent, you know. But I, I get the energy, though, that they're not even saying this in, like, a braggy type way. They're kind of just like, this is just who Pow One is. Like, Pow One is not the type of person who goes around just trying to tell people, hey, I have all these degrees, or hey, you know, I've worked this job, I've worked that job, I'm doing this. Like, this is just... Pile one is just naturally this, just sitting there like whether, and it doesn't matter, matter the gender here, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, you're just sitting there and you're just glowing. You're just glowing. You're just so abundant. And I feel like this person is like, like, look, like, look at Pile one's picture. Like you just see it. Like, it's not even something that this person really even has to sell. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that's just evident anyone can see these things and so they're telling their friends how effortless you are and how you're just a natural at certain things this person is also telling their friends about what they can see you and them doing together as far as like career work creative things not only is it like family but because this person definitely wants to have a family with you pal one but I'm seeing here as well, they're also telling their friends, like, I could see me and Pal One creating this, or I could see us building this together. Like, Pal One does this, and I do this, but somehow we're going to meet in the middle, and this could work like this. This person is also, I do feel, especially for some of you, that, you know, your person may have had someone else, or... And again, this could be third party, but, you know, when I say third party, I want to also say here that, you know, that could be work or family and again, or another person or all of the above. But 
this is a unique lover's card, okay? Because the lover's is usually like, um, you know, just a man and a woman. This here is three people, and this man is having to make a choice, okay? And so I do feel that this person, yeah, and I just saw 1111, um, confirmation. This person has had to make a choice. And this person may not have made the choice yet, but the choice is coming. And I'm hearing, Pal One, they're going to choose you. They're going to choose you and they're going to take, take the chance on you because with this very soon here, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. So this person is having to make a choice. And for some of you, this person has already made the choice, okay? But for some of you, the person has this person hasn't made the choice just yet. So it's a situation here where this person feels like they can trust you. They feel like they they feel like, you know, you can understand them. They're really just saying nothing but beautiful things about you to their friends. They're really just saying like again, how one is solid. How one is Someone who not only is physically attractive, but also a very intelligent, well-read, presents well, you know, person with a lot going on, a person who's very interesting, a person who is someone who I can build my life with. But like I said, it's still a little bit of the doubt there. It's like a 95% situation, but they feel like once they're around you more and once they get to know you more, because I do feel here that for some of you, you know, you're still just getting to know this person. And for some of you, if you're not even at that getting to know yet, that's coming in very soon. Because again, we see that very soon. This person, whether you know it or not, they already trust you. They already feel that level of trust for you. They already feel... Like you are a person that they can call on and you're dependable because you seem like how one you present as someone who has a dependable character and not even present you just they feel the energy that you are. You know, this person is also intuitive. OK, this person is an intuitive person and I feel that you are an intuitive person, how one. So this person, they recognize that as well within you. This person is the type of person who I feel, again, you know, they may have even been like what you want to call, you know, like a player type energy, playboy, playgirl. You know, they may have had a lot of options. They may have been the type of person where they really don't do commitment. They're just kind of just like in and out, you know, hooking up with people and just moving on. And so... Yeah, this person wants to come to, toward you. That noise, the car noise I'm hearing. Anyway, this person, I feel, this Knight of Cups here, this is that romantic feelings card. You know, with this horse dipping its foot in the water, dipping its um, leg in the water here, that's telling me that this person wants to take the chance. They want to take the chance with you. They want to dip. They want to go and into the emotional depths because again they're telling their friends that they feel like you are different they feel like the things like you are not the typical person you are not just like every other person that they've you know dated that they've dealt with they see you as different you know you are different but it's a situation where they're telling their friends you're different but you're not even trying to be different it's just who you are and this light that you shine is so attractive to them. And it's so, it's almost like a healing energy. I feel like this person gets like a healing energy from you. They feel like, again, you help them feel in power, in their power, in that emperor energy, regardless of gender. But I do get a very divine masculine energy here. I'm not going to lie. But regardless of gender, okay, they feel like they can go there with you to the emotional depths. And that's something that I feel like this person shies away from. They don't really do that with people that they deal with. They don't, you know, I'm getting the vibe here. 
I don't like to get too into the love and all of that type stuff because I don't want to get hurt. And so this person does things to protect themselves. And I do feel, Pal One, that this person wants to go there with you. They want to take that chance, take the leap. You know, they want, they're telling their friends about this. They're telling their friends that they feel that they can take this opportunity with you. They feel safe. They feel safe to do that. Like, even though they don't know what's ahead, because we do see here, this situation is calling for you to have faith. So this is for both you and this person have to have faith in this situation. Okay, faith that things will come to fruition, but not getting attached and not building expectations, but just faith that, you know, this is what you want. If this is what this person wants, trusting in the divine plan and trusting that things are happening for your highest good. So I don't think that they're sharing all of that with their friends, but they're sharing with their friends, again, very complimentary things about you, like. I'm just like hearing in my hand, hearing in my mind, this may be the one, this may be the one, like this may be the one I married. This may be the one that I settled down with. Power one has the key. Power one, like I'm ready to hang up, you know what I mean? My old ways. I'm ready to move on from that. I'm ready to settle down and I'm feeling like pile one is going to be the one I settled down with. And so I'm hearing, because like I said, I'm very clear audience. I'm just hearing their friends being like, okay, you're right. We heard that before. Okay. We're going to see. And you know, your person is just kind of like, yeah, we're going to see like, yeah, we all going to see, we all going to wait and see because your, your person, when I'm feeling like pile one, your person is ready. They're, and if they're not ready, they're getting to that place. They're getting to that place where they're moving slow. They're not moving because Knight of Pentacles, that's the slowest moving night. Okay, that's Earth energy. That's Taurus, um, Virgo, Capricorn. Okay, they're not moving in the fastest pace, but they're moving in the pace that feels good to them. Okay, and also let me give the other signs. So we have Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We also have Gemini. We also have Aries. We also have Leo. And we also have Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, okay? So, um, your person is taking their time, but I feel like they are a methodical person. And their friends know that. So, their friends, I think, are kind of in this place where they're just, like, kind of, like, listening to them. It's just letting them gas pile one up. You know what I mean? Like, okay, okay, cool. But your person is like, no. Like, I really do feel this is it. This is the one. Yeah, so anyway, so I feel like, you know, your person, you know, their friends are just kind of like, okay, yeah, 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 okay, we're going to see, we've heard this before, or maybe we haven't, but, you know, how one's person, I don't know, I just feel like they're just kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 but your person is not looking for the validation from the friends, okay, I want to make that clear. Your person is mentioning this to the friends because... They see your value now. They see your importance. And they see you as having this place in their life. Whereas before, they didn't always, you know, they saw it, but it wasn't as clear. And then they had a lot going on. So they really couldn't dive into that. Now they're at a place where it's like, okay, things are moving. Things are opening up. I can see it. I could see power one in my life. And not only can I see power one in my life, but I could see power one as my person. As like, I want to be with this person. I want to have a commitment with this person. So, your the friends, you know, they're not looking for validation from the friends. They're not looking for the friends to co-sign. Okay? They're not looking for the friends to be like, hey, yeah, go for it. Blah, 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 blah. They already know what they want. They're just telling you because they want to... This person is excited about you and they have a lot of strong feelings and passion for you, you know, romantic feelings and passion here. So they're telling them just because they want to talk about you. But I want to also say here, I feel like this person does have like a private nature to them. I don't feel that even if they have like a bunch of friends, I don't feel that they're just telling all their friends. I feel like they're only telling like maybe two or three friends, two or three people, four at the most, who they really trust who they really feel that, you know, 
they, you know, that they feel that they could trust with some of their private information because I do feel like this person is kind of like a private person. This person gives me like very, um, because this emperor here, this person looks like they may be very reserved. They don't like to share their personal business with people. So I do feel here that they're only sharing this information with two, three, four people max. And the people that they share with, it's not about validation. It's not about what do you think. It's nothing about that. It's more so, I just want to talk about Pile 1. I just want to say, you know, Pile 1 may be it. You know, I really am looking forward to building something with Pile 1. And I'm excited about, you know, again, having something solid with Pile 1. So I do feel here, that's the type of things that they're saying. It's very beautiful, very complimentary. Like, I don't even see, like I said, the only thing that I saw that was like, okay, something that's maybe not as complimentary was just not feeling totally sure. Feeling mostly sure, but just not feeling like, like when they say that Pile 1 could be the one, I feel like they're like, yeah, I'm like 90% sure, 95% sure. I got to see a little bit more, give it a little bit more time. But for the most part, I'm saying that Power One is the one, okay? And like I said, it's not a situation that, you know, they're looking at this like, okay, hey, hey, what do you think about Power One? Hey, friend, what do you think? Do you think that Power One, you know, whatever, you know, they're showing or whatever they're talking about, do you think that Power One is this or that? No, it's nothing like that at all. This person is very confident and sure about how they feel about you, about whatever you said to them, whatever you, uh, the, like, whatever they've seen about you, whatever the side that they've, that you've shown them, Pal One, they're very confident about what, whatever it is that they've seen, and they feel like you're a short thing, and they just feel like you are a solid person. And so, like I said, they feel good about you, they're telling their friends they feel good about you, and they're looking forward to getting to know you more and building more of a commitment with you, something solid with you. All right, so let's get into your oracles, pile one. So we have dry desert, 31, which reduces to the number four, deep freeze, 26, which reduces to the number eight. And then we have bone collector, number one. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so we have I see God in everything. I am attracting my soul tribe. My ancestors come through for me. And then we have love in spite of it all. No two flowers are the same, yet all are beautiful in their own way. You are destined for greatness on the wings of love. And then we have Yeehaw. All right, I have a couple more. So we have, you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. And, and then we have Unbound, Releasing Soul Patterns, Contracts, and Past Lives. All right, I'm going to get a couple charms to Pile 1. All right, charms to Pile 1, please. So we have... All right, so we have never give up, find joy in the journey. We have a little boat here. Then we have this uh, cat. And this is like, um, I forget the name, but it's like the Egyptian cat, like the cat you would see in ancient Egypt, but I forget the specific name. Okay, and then we have Capricorn, Aries, we saw that energy in the reading. Then we have me versus me. And we have a little a um, mixer here for baking. 
and then we have the star and a fairy and then we have a cord here silk cord okay pile one so let's get into it so i feel like pile one right now this is a transitional transformative time for you with this dry desert deep freeze and bone collector i feel like i don't know if you're doing past life healing right now but past life healing is going to be important right now if you are diving into that i have um readings on that you know i say um uh, for me past life healing is some of the most transformative work you will do because honestly when you start diving into that and you could do that through meditation or you know you could go to someone for like some type of regression therapy but when you start digging into that you start releasing a lot of junk that's held down and within your soul deep within your subconscious that you don't even realize and you release it and then you you're not tied to it anymore with the silk cord here you are tied to some things you don't even realize and this could be some soul contracts that need to be released at this point so right now you're releasing soul patterns and they could be ancestral because we have my ancestors come through for me and the bone collector here that's that ancestral energy okay so you could be releasing some ancestral wounds as well and past life wounds okay be gentle with yourself be nurturing with yourself right now because with this me versus me coming up that means you are your own enemy right now nothing else is against you but you so that's about breaking down those self-limiting beliefs and really coming to a place of balance and peace within and releasing those things that no longer serve you i see here with this dry desert and deep freeze i feel like you're going through again it's that transformation it's from one spectrum to the next hot cold you know, again, you're in a transformative period right now. Be gentle and nurturing with yourself. It's not the easiest time right now to do this healing. Even, you know, even when you come out of your deep healing, you're still healing. And healing is not always easy, but it's very, very rewarding. Okay, so be gentle. Nurture yourself. If you don't feel like being bothered with people, don't be bothered. If you don't feel like doing certain things, don't do it. Do what feels right for you right now. Because again, you're going through a lot. You're releasing a lot of those contracts and you're healing. So you may feel sometimes you're kind of cold. You don't want to be bothered. You know, you need to just be by yourself. But then you may be in an energy of feeling a little warm and feeling like you want to be outside and be around people. And so you take what works for you. Don't force anything. Not at all. Just take what works for you right now. And again, with this Egyptian cat, some of you may have some past life energy where you feel like you, you know, resonate with having a past life in ancient Egypt. So that connection, like, for example, this connection with this person could be coming from that time, from that past life. You know, that's how deep some of these things go, because I did pick up a spiritual connection here. Um... So it's a situation here where you're going to have to be gentle and nurture yourself. And some of the things that you're letting go is connected with your past lives and some ancestral wounds. Okay, when my ancestors come through for me, again, thank your ancestors. Give them an offering. Thank them and let them know. If you have an altar, go to the altar. Thank them. Thank them for helping you. Right now... With this card, you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. So you're being asked, don't overthink things right now. This is, if you're stepping into a new chapter, which some of you may be, again, because it's a transformative time, don't overthink it, okay? You have done this before. Keep facing your true north. Keep facing your purpose and why you are here, okay? If you need help, ask your ancestors, your spirit guides, the angels. Ask for help. They will always guide you and help you, but keep facing the north. Don't overthink things, okay? With this, not no two flowers are the same, yet all are beautiful in their own way. So for me, this is saying again, recognize that this is a journey, okay? Everything is not going to be the same. Your journey is not going to be like other people's journey. Everyone's journey is different. And you are destined for greatness. Love in spite of it all. 
love even when it doesn't feel like you have enough love to give continue to love because the more you love yourself the more you can love others you have to give this love to yourself first and you're being asked to continue to give yourself love through this process because it's not an easy process okay this is not a, and i just saw 12 12 confirmation there it's not an easy process but the more love you give yourself the more you can feel good about things and you're giving yourself that love, nurture, care, that TLC that you deserve to get you through this time. With this bone collector here, I do feel like for some of you, this is telling me that, you know, you have, it's kind of like for some of you, you have medicine man, medicine woman, shaman type energy that you're going to be tapping into okay and this again is in your ancestral line so this is new energy coming in for you okay the new um activations that are happening for you that you're going to start realizing okay i am attracting my soul tribe again you are attracting new people in your life you are gaining new people in your life you know you may be losing some but you're going to be gaining better people people who are in alignment with who you are people who get it people who are on the same kind of journey and that you can trust okay so you're attracting good people into your um to your life right now so just trust that and trust that process and with that yeehaw that just tells me there are surprises coming for you that that card tells me there are surprises it's going to be some sweet rewards and you just have to keep doing your work keep focusing on you keep doing your work keep loving yourself keep having faith in the journey find love and joy in the journey okay and don't give up so with this fairy here that's telling me again you have that support you have that support you have that love for some of you with this this mixer the stand-up mixer this may be saying it's time to get creative it's time to you know do some things that feels good again that you're passionate about things that will light up um, your light up your world bring you some joy that could be baking cooking you know exercise swimming walking playing basketball do whatever feels like you can Get some immediate joy from that maybe you haven't done in a while picking up a hobby photography you know doing different things okay so i really hope that helps pile one thank you so much for being here with me today um i'm sending you so much love on your journey i'm proud of you for showing up for yourself if no one told you that they love you today i love you thank you again for all the subscribers thank you again to the capital L O V E tribe Please like the video. Please comment below. Let me know how that resonated for you. Please join the Capital L of E tribe by subscribing. Thank you all and I'll see you in the next reading. Bye. Okay, sorry about that, Patsu. I have a new camera, so anyway. We have Queen of Cups. We have Knight of Pentacles. Also, if you can hear my girls in the background. My bad. Working from home, so you know how that is. All right, Knight of Swords. We have Page of Swords. We have the Sun. We have Eight of Wands in reverse. Pile two, pile two, please. The cards are just jumping. Six of Wands. And then we have the Moon in Reverse. Okay, bottom of the deck, we have Nine of Swords. All right, let's get these cards out. So we have Worth Waiting For. New love. And we also have separation. Okay. And then we have salvation, green Tara, number 18. And that reduces to the number nine. 
Okay, pile two. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have healing. Okay, 19. So that reduces to the number um, 10. So you have 9 and 10 here. And then we have the moon. Mama Killa, 32, which is 5, which reduces to the number 5. And then we have Bestia Home, 22 which reduces to number four. So that's interesting. We have nine, 10, then five, four. Okay, very interesting. Are we supposed to share the zebra cake? Okay, Paul one. I've seen, okay, this, so listen, I just started this reading and I've been interrupted five times. Paul one, I wasn't interrupted at all. When those things happen like that, I have to point this out because I feel like this is what's going on in your person's world. Before I even get into this, I feel like you don't really know what's going on in your person's world. And I feel like your person is, to be fair, I don't feel like your person is letting you know what's going on in their world. But I want to point this out. Your person is clearly dealing with a lot. They have a lot going on. I literally get interrupted five different times within the, the last five minutes with the camera, with my kids, all these different things. I want to just let you know, your person is clearly dealing with a lot of distractions, a lot of interruptions, a lot of blocks. It's a lot going on. I just feel like a chaotic energy. So I just want to point that out to give you some type of insight as to what may be going on with your person. And we do see here the Nine of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. And for me, this is definitely, definitely the anxiety card. Anxiousness anxiety, sleepless nights. What your person is telling their friends? Um, they're telling their friends that they see you as a very loving person. Like you have just a lot of love. Your cup is overflowing full of love. They honestly, they don't even really understand how you have so much love they they feel very um they they i even hear them telling their friends this like how does pal two just have so much love like i don't even understand how this person can love so much you know your person and you take this how this resonates i feel like your person is very base level when it comes to love meaning they don't have the type of awareness an idea of how love works like you do you know, this person is very much like base level when it comes to love. So that means like if someone tells them that they love them, they don't really believe it. Okay. This person is dealing, I can feel and I'm hearing this person deals with a lot of unworthiness. So it's hard for them to believe that they have a difficult time believing when someone tells them that they love them, when someone... And yeah, now I hear the train. Again, more confusion, more noise in the mind, more blockages. They have a hard time believing when someone says that they love them. They have a hard time um, accepting that love. I feel like this person, and they do want to come towards you. I want to say that also. I don't even know if you can hear this train. It's so loud. Um, this person, you know, they look at, they're telling their friends like, Wow, Pow 2 just has so much love. Like, I don't even know how Pow 2 loves the way that Pow 2 loves. You know, they're telling them how, for some of you, I'm seeing here with this Queen of Cups, you know, they just look at you as very mature when it comes to love, very giving, very loving, very selfless. You know, they tell their friends, you love hard, you give a lot of love. You understand what love is really about. Um, they really respect that about you. They see you also as a person that has a lot of childlike innocence, a lot of joy. Um, you're the type of person that can light up the room. You know, you have a big personality. You have a lot of love. You have a lot of... Again, it's like they, they tell their friends like, and I'm not saying that they say it in this way, but the way that they express it, it's like their friends are even blown away listening to them talk about it because it's kind of like the way they express it. They're like, 
it's almost like they're expressing a higher level concept this higher level beyond what their friends can even understand but the way that they express it is like wow like okay pal two's person really gets pal two like that's what their friends are thinking like okay Whatever they got going on, Pow 2 and this person is a vibe. Like, they kind of get each other. Because this person is just kind of like, you know, Pow 2, the way Pow 2 loves is like, not like everybody else. Pow 2 just has a lot of love to give. And they're very selfless when it comes to love. This person, I mean, I'm seeing here that they talk to their friends about trying to possibly you know, build something with you, give some type of commitment. But it's a situation where I'm hearing that they told their friends that they would like to commit to you, but it's something that they don't feel like they're able to do. And with all this red here, I'm hearing and I'm feeling like it's, again, like those self-limiting beliefs connected to childhood and connected to their sense of self-worth. Um, they have a hard time dealing with that. You know, they have a hard time grappling with that because I'm seeing and I'm hearing here that, you know, this person feels like you have a very healing presence. They tell people that, you know, you may be a healer or a light worker. Um, the friends know that. The friends, um, they, they talk about that. They talk about the, the your person talks about that with their friends. Like, you know, Pow 2 does this, Pow 2 does that. I'm hearing they're like, yeah, they kind of like, yeah, Pow 2 is wow. You know, Pow 2 does a lot of different things, you know. Um, for some of you, I'm hearing that this person, you know, with the salvation and green tar here, um, they're saying that you helped save them from certain things. You helped rescue them. You helped pull them out of depression or you helped... You help them to climb out of a dark time or a dark moment in time. Um, you you know, this person may have been going through something. And whatever you said and did helped to bring them out of that. And they told their friends about it. And it, it could have been just like, you know, you... You know, like again, some type of expression with love. Because the way this is lining up. Some type of expression with love. You know, you may have just sent them a message, an email or something. Or... You know, you may have just done something where, you know, everyone else didn't know about what you were talking about, but this person, pal to your person knew. And it was, it was like a form of salvation for them. It helped them to feel that healing energy. It helped them to connect with your love, the love that you have for them. So they told, I'm hearing that they told one friend about that. Um, because this person has a group of friends that pal one was a little different, um, this person has like a group of friends that they talk to you. They talk about to, I mean, they, Mercury and retrograde. Um, let me change my words up. This person has a group of friends that they talk about, talk to them about um, your place in their life. So what I'm trying to say is this. This person has like a group of friends. So let's just say they have like 10 friends, okay? And I mean, just take this how this resonates, but this is the example I'm giving. So they have 10 friends. They may have three very close friends out of this group. And so each person knows different things about you, if this makes sense. Like the three closest friends know the most, but it may be one or two friends that really just know a lot about how they feel. But then like the other friends just know bits and pieces. Okay. And even the friend group has talked about you, meaning they've talked about what your person has shared about you outside of this, your person being around. So for example, Let's just say friends eight, nine, friend eight, nine, and ten, okay? They've come together, just those three, and they said, hey, you know, Pal 2's person said this and that about Pal 2. And so your person wasn't even around, but they're just coming together. They're bringing the story together with friend eight, nine, and ten, okay? And they're just saying, like, hey, you know, 
Pile two's person said this about pile two. Pile two's person, then friend nine is like, yeah, well, pile two's person said this to me about pile two. So it's kind of a situation where this person has said different things about you to each friend in the friend group, but the closest friends, they know the most. And like I said, it's one or two closest friends that they have pretty much told a lot about how they think and feel about you. And so the closest friends know that this person has even said like they could see themselves marrying you because six of wands, this is not the typical six of wands image. You know, this is the, this six of wands image is like a, um, you know, this is a ceremony. This is a wedding. Okay. Usually six of wands is just one person being celebrated, but this is a wedding celebration. You know, this person they know the truth of that. They, they've they had dreams about marrying you. They've had dreams about um, sharing a life with you. And they've told a couple of their friends about that. They've told a couple of their friends of like, hey, I could see myself marrying Pal 2. I could see myself being with Pal 2. But it's kind of a situation where this person is still searching for they're searching for validation. And not only is it validation from you, but they're searching for validation from their friend group. Um, Pal one, they weren't searching for validation. They were just kind of expressing themselves and just, you know, just kind of just to express themselves. This person in Pal two, your person is expressing themselves to get validation like, hey, validate me, not validate how Pal two looks or validate how Pal 2 presents or carries themselves. Not that type of validation, but kind of validation like, you know, am I really worthy of having a committed situation with this person? You know, they don't come out and say this, but it's kind of like the way that they lead the conversation. It's kind of like, you know, do you think Pal 2 has all of this going on? Do you think Pal 2 would want to be with somebody like me? It's kind of like that. Like, to help, they're looking for that. They're talking to their friends about it to help validate them so they can feel more worthy of being in your life in that way. Having that commitment in, your, in that way because they don't believe it. And so that's kind of, it, it's a lot of, because we have the moon here twice, you know, with this card. We have the moon, we have the moon in reverse, but we also have this one, you know, so this person, you know, this person is intuitive and they see you as very intuitive and they tell their friends that you're very intuitive. I even heard, you know, oh, pal two can read my mind. Pal two knows what I'm thinking. You know, sometimes this person doesn't like that, but they have shared that with their friend group. You know, the fact that they feel that you can read their mind. Um, this person has also shared with the friend group that, you know, whenever they are around you, you feel like home. You feel like, you know, a dream come true. You feel like time just stops. This I'm saying these things because this is what I'm hearing. So I'm just channeling exactly some of the things that they're saying. Um, they feel like time, you know, is endless. It's, it's almost like five minutes with you or not five minutes, like maybe like a couple of hours with you feels like five minutes. You know, you feel like home. You you represent that warm nurturing, loving nature, that warmth. You could be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, because I am getting that pretty heavy here. And also I'm getting, um, you know, Cancer, Spice, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces as well. But this person, it's almost like, because this person deals with so much unworthiness they can envision all of these things with you pal too and they can even express these things to their friends because like i said this is you know this person has definitely talked about you quite a bit with their friend group this is not like pal one was a little different okay pal one i feel like you know they kind of kept things under wraps and then now they're kind of talking about their person but pal two this person has been talking about you and now I feel like they've gotten more comfortable with talking about you to their friend group. And it's a situation where it's kind of like this is helping them to see more of a future with you. But it's also 
kind of having them in this place where it's like, okay, what am I going to do about it? I don't know what I can really do. Because like I said, I feel like this person has a lot going on. And, you know, this person seriously deals with, has serious issues with anxiety. I think that this person has also told their friends that you give them anxiety. You give them anxiety. This connection with you gives them anxiety. And it's anxiety because this person wants to try to control things. This person likes to be in control. Um, I'm hearing that this person, they like to, they typically date beneath them. They they entertain people kind of like, you know, people that they know. And when I say beneath, I mean like they may not make as much money. They may have, you know... They may not be as intelligent as your person, things like that. Like they purposefully know that they're kind of entertaining people that they know are not on their level, but they do that because that helps them to feel worthy and you shake them to the core because they don't feel worthy of you. They feel so unworthy around you. And I don't know if you know that. I think that you may not know that because I do see here, you know, you could be in a separation from this person a, um, because we have that separation card out. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. And if you're not in separation, you could be coming into separation. But this person feels like you are worth waiting for. They feel like, because we have here worth waiting for, divine timing is at work in your love life. This person is kind of like, I'm hearing for some of you, they've asked their friends for help because it's kind of a situation where They've um, talked to a couple of the, the like the closest friends again and kind of just told them everything that's going on. And they're like, well, what should I do? And, you know, the friends are just kind of like, you know, some of them are giving sound advice and some of them are not. I'm just going to be honest, um, you know, and your person, you know, they kind of know they can't take everything like they can't. Um, Everything that their friends are telling them to do, they know that they have to just kind of take it and take it for what it is. And, you know, maybe everything doesn't apply. You know how that old saying goes, take things with a grain of salt. It's kind of like your person does that, even though, you know, this person may say, hey, this is what you should do. If it doesn't feel right to your person, they don't do it. So your person is in touch with their intuition, even if they're not strong with their intuition yet, they are in touch with like, okay, even though this friend, I do trust this friend, they're telling me to do this. That doesn't really feel right. I'm not going to fall for it. Um, this person, again, you know, they've told their friends, for some of you, again, their closest friends, and for some of you I'm hearing is one, two, or three. They've told them how deeply they feel about you. You know, they've told this friend that, hey, I'm in love with Pal 2. And, you know, Pal 2, I can't, I don't know. It, it's almost like regardless of how your person feels spiritually or, you know, how in touch they are with those type of things, they recognize the love that they feel for you because they do love you. I want us to say that as well. And they do recognize that. And so they express this to one or two friends. And they, it was kind of a situation where they're like, I don't know what to do with this. And so, you know, they got the advice, but they're kind of just sitting on it. They're really not, you know, doing anything with it. But, you know, they're not telling their friends anything derogatory or, you know, anything negative about you. Everything is very positive, but it's, it's a lot of like, hopes and fears in these conversations. It's a lot of like, I don't know what to do. You know, pal two is like this, pal two says this, you know, they do feel intellectually that you two are on the same level, which that thrills them as well. But it's a situation where they just don't feel worthy enough of your love. Because again, this person has a very basic level understanding of love. You know, they feel like, okay, when people say that, hey, I love you. They don't really trust it. This person has been hurt a lot. This person is very wounded. So even with you, if you've told them how to, hey, you know, I love you. I do love you. You know, they've had a hard time accepting that. You know, they have a hard time accepting love. They don't really know how to genuinely accept it because 
they're in this place where they don't really know how to love themselves. And even when they've loved other people, they've been hurt. So they have a hard time with that. So I think that's another reason why this connection gives them that anxiety because they really don't know what to do with it. They're feeling so much, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to express it. They don't. And all of these things that they're feeling is forcing them and pushing them to, you know, understand love in a deeper way and open themselves up to it more. But it's a situation where, you know, um, they don't know what to do with it. They're, they're just really puzzled. And so for some of you, when they talk to their friends about you, that's what they talk about. Like they don't speak on it like that, but they're kind of just saying like how to has told me how they feel. And I don't know what to do with that. Like I feel this way, but I don't know how to tell how to this is how I feel because I don't feel worthy of how to, I don't feel I can give how to what they deserve because they see you as a person that deserves the world. And they just don't feel like they know how to give you that. And again, that's their worthiness issues. That's their confidence and those self-limiting beliefs. But these are the kind of things that they've told their friends. Now, when I was saying like with the friends who are not, are not as close, but they do consider them friends, I don't feel this person has said, I love pal two to those friends, like friend six, friend seven, friend eight. Okay. If you're following that example I was giving. I don't feel that they've said, hey, you know, friend number eight, I do love pal too. I don't feel that they've done that. But I do feel that they've said different things like, hey, you know, I do. Pal two is dope. You know, pal two does this. I care about pal two. Pal two, you know, again, you help them. You've given them that healing energy. You've helped them out of some dark circumstances. And, you know, they feel that they feel that love and they feel that energy from you. And these are the kind of things that they've told their friends. I do feel like their friends see how deeply they feel for you. And like I said, some have said some, you know, some have given some sound advice and some haven't. But I do feel that, you know, your this person's friends are intrigued by you as well. And they're kind of just like you know, wondering what it's all about as well. So, you know, that's coming up pretty clearly here. And, you know, your person, I, I feel like, you know, your person's dealing with a lot. Like I said, with so many distractions. Um, I feel like it's a lot going through your person's mind. Your person's mind never stops. I don't feel like your person is taking care of themselves and getting the proper rest and, you know, taking care of themselves properly the way that's necessary for them to, you know, be their, be their uh, best selves. So let's get into your oracles. We have 40, number four, follow the leader. Forty nine talesman. Okay. And that reduces to number 13, which is another four. So I feel like we saw some other fours out for you too. 36, commitment, which reduces to the number nine. And then we have, I am open to harmony. I am rooted in unconditional love. I am gorgeous. I trust myself fully. Okay. Those you love, love you. Take time to make a demonstration. Love doesn't have to mean near. Then we have soul family calling your tribe. You don't have to do this alone. Deep replenishment. Retreat, rest, be held. All right, so let's get some charms out for you, Pal 2. Charms for Pal 2, please. Okay, so we have... Live your dream. We have an eagle. 
And that's uh, Scorpio energy, transformation. We have a horse. And that's like freedom, representing freedom. Loyalty also. Me versus me. Keep calm and kill zombies. We have the binoculars. We have a rose. We have a sun. So that's Leo energy. We also have a reindeer. So that's like Christmas time. We have Pisces. We have Cancer. We have a bow and arrow, which is that's like Sagittarius energy and like Cupid energy. We have a fan here. We have an angel. We have a money bag. And we have a key. Okay. All right. So we're going to do it all together. Pile two. So commitment. Love doesn't have to mean near. Okay, so I'm guided to read the back of this. Um, some are better loved at a distance for a while anyway, and that's okay. Besides, love doesn't really know the difference. Okay, so, you know, this is just saying, you know, you could love, you could love this person. You could love people from a distance. And the love is still felt. The love is still real. It doesn't mean it doesn't, you know, it's not felt. It doesn't mean it, you know, goes away. I do see here, especially we have two keys here and a key on here. We, You have a commitment coming in, okay? Someone is coming in to commit to you. Now, it could be this person, but it doesn't have to be because we did see a new love situation there. It could be a new start with this person or it could be someone else. But we do have a commitment coming in for you. Pile two, and it's going to be of a love nature type commitment. Um, those you love, love you. You know, this is just coming through again. This person is telling you they love you. Okay. Whether you know this or not, whether this person has said this or not, this person loves you. You know, um, it's very clear that they love you. This bow and arrow, you struck them. You struck their heart. Okay. They feel like they... They definitely hold you deep in their heart. With this rose here, I do feel like for some of you, they want to give you roses or they want to give you some type of gift. Um, again, more that water energy, speaking to that intuition and that emotional depth that they have for you. Okay, time to make a demonstration. The older the soul, the softer the glance, the quicker the smile, and the sooner to say, I love you. They also skip and wink more than normal and hold hands with those they walk beside. So I just feel like, again, something is coming in for you. And, you know, I do feel, pal, too, that, you know, some of you may really want some type of commitment. You want some type of love commitment. But you're going to have to remember that you are already rooted in unconditional love. All the love that you want from outside sources are within. You have to remember that. In order to have the things that you want, the type of love connections you want, it's already within. So keep loving yourself more and keep remembering that you're rooted in unconditional love. And the love is coming in for you. Uh, some type of love commitment is coming in. Follow the leader. You know, again, you may be a healer. You may be a light worker. Spirit is saying to you, if this is what you're telling people to do, you follow the leader. Be open to harmony. Keep yourself rooted in unconditional love keep loving yourself and keep trusting yourself keep affirming you are gorgeous i trust myself fully i am open to harmony and continue to do that work you do need some rest right now retreat rest be held you need to um take the time take a break heal yourself love yourself rest sleep drink your water Take care of yourself. You do need to take time for yourself. That's a part of loving yourself and self-care as well. With these binoculars, you know, this person has their, their eye on you. They're watching you. They're not letting you go, okay? They love you. They really do. With um, this angel here, this is telling me, especially with the soul family calling your tribe, angels are near. If you need them to help you, call on them. Ask for help. Ask them to love you. Ask them to hold you, okay? Ask them for any kind of help you need because they are right near you, there to help you. Me versus me. This is, again, telling me this came out in pile one. You are your own enemy right now. It's you versus you. No one else is in your way. You have to get out of your head, stop overthinking, let go of those self-limiting beliefs, 
and trust yourself. Trust yourself and trust your inner guidance. You are going through a transformation because we have that equal, that Scorpio energy. You are going through a transformation. Be gentle with yourself. Love yourself. Be kind and nurturing. With this money bag, you have money coming, unexpected money on the way to you. Keep trusting in that as well. We also have here calling your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. Don't think that you have to carry on and do things alone. Keep calm and kill zombies. That means keep doing the work. Keep healing. Keep slaying those dragons. Okay? Keep being true to yourself. Keep loving yourself. Keep doing the work. Okay? And keep trusting in the horse of freedom. Keep trusting freedom is yours. Keep loving yourself. For some of you with this reindeer, Christmas time may be significant. There may be some surprises coming for you around Christmas. But, you know, we don't know. And with this fan, you know, you may need to let some things cool off. Okay? Because I do see here with this talesman energy, that's that energy of making a choice, not knowing the direction to take. And so for what I'm hearing for many of you, the direction is not clear because it's not meant to be clear right now. It's meant for you to trust. You're being asked to just trust. Let go of the control. Let go of the need to control and just trust. Trust that when you are told to do something, that you are guided in the right direction and everything is happening for your highest good. You don't need to know everything right now because as you can see in this picture, the path is not clear. And you're being asked to let it go and just to trust. So when you're told to do something, take that inspired line action and just do it. You don't need to know any other details. Everything is happening for your highest good. So just trust and keep moving forward. Get out of your own way. Get out of your head. You are your own enemy right now. Okay. Let go of that self-sabotaging energy. Continue to root yourself in unconditional love because that's who you are. So I really hope that helps, Pile 2. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm proud of you for showing up for yourself and doing the work. If no one told you that they love you today, I love you. Um, please like the video. Please subscribe. Join the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Comment below. Let me know how that resonated for you. Thank you all so much. I'll see you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, Pal3. Welcome to your reading. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. I hope you're feeling great. I hope you're feeling well. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E Tribe. Thank you all so much for all of your love. Okay, we're going to get right into it, Pal3. What is your person telling their friends about you? What is your person Telling their friends about you, Pal 3. All right, Pal 3, let's go. Spirit, what is Pal 3's person telling their friends about Pal 3? Okay, cars are just jumping. All right, so we have Temperance. We have Page of Cups in Reverse. We have three of pentacles. Have three, please. We have the magician. Have three, have three. What are they telling their friends about? Have three. We have seven of swords. We have Page of Pentacles. Okay. Three of Wands. It's like a little emergency situation. So I'm, I'm hearing that um, for some of you, this person, you know, they... Um, I don't know. It's like they're they're telling their friends, like especially we're hearing that siren in the background. It's kind of like they're telling their friends that they don't really they don't really know. It's almost like yeah. So especially when Seven of Cups has just come out too, um, they don't really know what's going on, what's going on with you, what's happening with you. But we're gonna get more into it. So and the bottom of the deck, Ten of Pentacles. Okay, well, we're going to get more into it. 
Um, we have playfulness. We have make the effort. And we have engagement. We also have the past 37. Move these up. Thirty-seven, which reduces to the number ten. So that's two tens out now. That's ten ten. If you want to Google that, new beginnings thirteen. That reduces to number four. Then we have beauty number six, and we have water. 33. So that's two sixes. So that's 66 and 10, 10. And six represents unconditional, represents love. Okay. Well, unconditional love. I wanted to say that at first, but it just represents love as well. Okay. Pile three. What is this person telling their friends about you? Okay. Pile three. Um, and I'm sorry. I do apologize if you can hear my girls in the background working from home. They're here with me today. So... Um, they're telling their friends, they definitely feel like, you know, they can see, they definitely see you as a person, commitment material. They see you as a person that, you know, they can have this family with, that they can, you know, be committed to marriage, um, you know, again, have that family, have a long lasting, solid commitment they definitely tell their friends that the potential is there for that. Um, they see you as a balanced person, a person who values um, balance, who values love, who values um, compassion, kindness, gratitude. They see you as a person who can be, have a humble nature, have a... Um, just a way about you that is very soothing, very healing, very balanced. Um, but they also, they don't, they see, they, they tell their friends that they sometimes just feel like you can be a little sneaky or you're not showing or revealing your true self. Because Seven of Swords, that's like a sneaky card. That's a... Not sneaky, but in the it's strategic and it can be sneaky. It's a sneaky card for me, and especially with the way this image is depicted here. Um, they see you as a strategic person. They see you as a strategic thinker, and they tell their friends about that. But they also feel that there's some sneakiness going on, or they don't quite exactly know what's happening with you, what's going on in your life. I do feel like... There may be a separation here with this person. Um, there may just be like, you know, you and this person may have talked off and on. You know, it could have been a situation where things just kind of fell off or it's like some type of ghosting energy here. Um, but they're just not clear as to what's going on with you. They, they want to, they tell their friends about, they want to know more about what's happening with you. And what's happening with you in their world, in your world. Um, they don't really, again, they don't know. I do feel like this person has shared some of their feelings with you. This person has, um, you know, they they may have told you again a little bit how they feel. Or they may have shared with you, um, again, like how they feel. You know, I don't feel that it was like they shared a lot about how they felt, but they may have just given you, pile three, just a little bit of an indication of how they felt about you. And um, so they tell their friends about that. They tell their friends that they told, you know, they told their, um, they told pile three how they felt about pile three. And they told their friends like, you know, they tell their they tell their friends that they dream about you as well that you they have these dreams about you and they kind of just don't know what to do with this the type of 
information and the dreams that they have about you. It's kind of like, you know, they dream about you, but it's like, okay, what next? What, what's, what's happening next? Um, now, I do want to say here, Pal 3, that I do feel that, you know, this person, Pal 3, your person, they've, they don't talk to a lot of people. I, I want to just make that clear. Like each pile, I've kind of gotten a, a vibe about, you know, how many friends they're sharing this information with. Um, I do feel that this person is private. I do feel that they only probably have told, you know, a couple of people about you at the most three. Um, this person just seems to be a private person. They don't seem to be the type of person that, you know, I don't even think this person has a lot of friends. Um, they just seem to have like this private nature. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, they've told, you know, they've told their friends that they feel like, you know, you work a lot, that, you know, you are an ambitious person, that you work very hard. They feel like you're very attractive because with this beauty card, that's telling me that they've told their friends that, you know, they feel like you're very attractive. You're very aesthetically pleasing. They, um, you know, I'm hearing that they like, they told their friends they like the way you dress. They feel like you have a nice sense of style. Um, they told their friends that they like how much of a hard worker you are. Like you work a lot, but I am also seeing here that they do feel that um, even though, you know, they wonder, especially like with this playfulness too, they wonder like in some of these things that I'm saying that I don't feel that they've told their friends, but they, it's just kind of thoughts that have gone through their mind. Um, I do see here that they told their friends that they wonder, you know, how much time that you do you have for play or how much, you know, what do you do on your time where you're not working? It's kind of like the vibe I'm getting. Like when Pal 3 is not working, what do they do? Um, like I said, I feel like this person has like a lot of questions about you because Seven of Cups, that's the card of like possibilities, questions, wondering illusion you know this person is kind of like questioning and wondering a lot of different things about you and I do feel like they like they have expressed that to their friends um like you know I don't really know you know they may have said things like I don't really know what pal 3 does for this or I don't really know what pal 3 is you know like let's just say it's a situation where the friend is like yeah, you know, um, you and Pal 3, you guys went out. So, you know, what what's Pal 3 doing the next weekend? Or what are they doing this summer? Or something like that. And, you're, and the person is just like, I don't know. You know, Pal 3 hasn't told me that information. So it's kind of like, you know, your person is kind of, I don't, like, I feel for some of you that makes them feel a way that they don't really know. But it also... It's just like they know that, you know, Pile 3 has like a lot of mystery because Seven of Cups can be that card of mystery as well. So it's kind of like Pile 3 has that element of mystery. So it's just kind of like, well, we don't know. But, you know, this person, they've told their friends that, you know, you are a serious manifester. You know, you you know how to create something out of nothing. You know how to manifest. You know how to get exactly what you want. And not only do you know how to do it, but you do do it. You get what you want. You go for it. You, you know how to make things happen. And you know how to continue to build the exact life that you want. This person tells their friends that they see you as a person who's a, also the magician can represent that Mercury energy. So that's Gemini Virgo. So this person feels like, you know, they tell their friends that, you know, you're a great, um, you do great things with like communication and you, you know how to 
build the life that you want. You know how to get what you want and you get what you want. Not only do you know how to get it, but it actually does happen for you. So this person has like a lot of, um, they have admiration for you, Pile 3, and they've expressed that to their friends. Um, this person, because what we see here with the past and new beginnings, I'm feeling the energy of, you know, this person looks at you as like a new beginning, a new beginning for them, a person who opens the door for new opportunities, new, um, a new horizon, okay? Because Three of Wands can represent that. New horizon, new perspective, new beginnings, you know, traveling. You know, this person may have even told their friends that you like to travel a lot. You seem like, you know, you may be like a globe trotter. You know, you're all over the place. So I do feel that they've, you know, told their friends about that too. That like, and you may travel a lot for work, you know, especially with the Three of Pentacles here. You may travel a lot for work. So they may have told their friends, like, you know, Pile 3 is busy a lot. They travel a lot. They work hard. They're always on the go. So, you know, this person, they've shared very practical things about you to their friends. Um, again, but they do see this as a situation where it's like, although they, you know, they share these little things, they still kind of just like wonder what's going on with you, what's happening with you. Um, they wonder how you feel about things. And I feel like, like, I feel like they may have told like one or two, like I said, this person doesn't have like a big friend group, or at least they're not sharing these type of feelings, you know, these type of things that I've been channeling. They're not sharing this with a lot of people. So they may have only told like one friend, like, you know, they wonder how you're doing, or they wonder what you're doing, or they wonder what's happening with certain things in your life, because they do feel like it's a lot of mystery here. It's a lot of things that are not clear. It's a lot of things that are, you know, kind of in the unknown. This person does also tell their friends that, you know, and I want to also say this, this person doesn't look to the friend group for validation about you, Pile 3. Um... You know, that kind of came up in Pile 2. That's not what's happening here. Um, this person, they're pretty clear on how they feel about you, Pile 3. Um, they're pretty clear on their thoughts. They're pretty clear on, you know, again, their feelings. They're pretty clear on that. But when they talk to their friends about you, it's kind of just like a situation of just like venting. Just kind of like saying what's going on or what it is. It's not really like about... Hey, what do you think, friend? You know, what do you think about this? What I'm saying, or what do you think this means, or what do you, what do you think this person is trying? What do you think Pile Three is trying to say through this? It's nothing like that. It's kind of just like saying just what it is, just saying like, okay, you know, Pile Three, this is what's going on, or Pile Three is, you know, Pile Three said this and I said that, or you know, Pile Three was dealing with this and I told Pal 3 this so it's kind of just like that it's kind of just like very just like factual situations it's not really like you know getting advice or like getting advisement on how to proceed or like you know what do you think like if let's just say it's a situation like you and Pal 3 um you guys were exchanging messages this, you know, this person is not going back to the friends and like, hey, look at these messages. What do you think? It's nothing like that. You know what I mean? It's nothing like that at all. It's just kind of just like, you know, this person is just basically saying their feelings for you and what they think and what do they think is going on and like what may be happening within this connection. So I just want to make that clear as well. Okay, sorry about that, Paul. Sorry about that, Paul 3. Okay, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's not like um, they're like asking for help or asking for advice or, you know, trying to get validation about Pile 3 or trying to see what, you know, these things mean. It's nothing like that at all. This person seems like they're pretty clear on how they feel and what they're thinking. It's just I'm getting the vibe here that they just don't really know. Um 
everything that's going on with you, Pile 3. And it's kind of like they just respect you. This person has, like, a lot of respect for you. This person, um, they definitely... And they tell their friends that. They tell their friends that they respect you. They tell their friends, I feel like this person has a lot of admiration for you. They admire the things that you've done, whatever you've created, the things that you accomplish in your career. So, you know, this person has expressed that as well. I'm even hearing, like, I'm proud of you. You know, this person has told their friends how they're proud of you. And they're proud of, like, the success that you have been able to obtain. This person has also told their friends that, you know, especially if some of you resonate with past life energy, they feel like, you know, they feel like you are like a soulmate, a connection from a past life. So they've even, they may have even told, you know, they may have even told their friends like, hey, you know, Pile 3, I, I know I've had a past life with Pile 3, you know, I saw that or, you know, I just know because this person with this water energy here, this person is intuitive. So they may have expressed to, you know, the friend group that, hey, you know, there's been some past lives, you know, they may have done things like that. But this person, they definitely told their friends that they see this as a new beginning. They see this as a new opportunity. And, you know, they want to make the effort. They want to put, because we have make the effort here. They want to make the effort to make it work. This says, make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. So this person, again, because like I said, I, I do feel that this person has said some of how they feel. And so they may have expressed that to you, Pile 3. They may have told you how they feel. Um... And they may have told you how they see this as a new beginning for them. They see this as a new beginning for both of you. They may have been playful and flirty as well. And so they've told their friends about some of that um, energy as well. And with this engagement, like I said, this person, they've told their friends that they see themselves being in a committed situation with you, whether that is um, marriage whether that is just a long-term connection, maybe family, you know, this person, yeah, for some of you, again, I'm hearing that they've said, you know, they can see themselves having a family with you. They can see themselves having a long-term commitment, marriage, building something, something solid. So, you know, they, they've expressed that to their friend group as well. They've told their friend group that they definitely can see a long-term commitment from being with you, Pile 3. So, you know, this person has said pretty nice things about you. It's just, you know, complimentary things. It's just a situation where, you know, I do feel like there's just that, it's that mystery, there's that illusion, there's that, you know, they just don't know everything that's going on. They don't, they kind of question things. But like I said, with the questioning, I do feel like that's not always something that they talk about. That's just kind of ideas that I'm tapping into that's floating in their mind. But that's not really something that, you know, they discuss. But overall, this person has a lot of respect and admiration for you. And they definitely see you as a balanced, strong person who knows how to manifest and do whatever it is that they want to do. Hard worker, ambitious as well. All right, so let's get into your oracle. So we have come together, number eight. We have listening, 53, which is another eight. So that's 88 there. One ring circus, 15, and that reduces to six. So that's three sixes now. So you could Google that as well. Again, the number of love. So this person does love you, pile three. This person, because I think, yeah, we saw the sixes in the other cards. So yeah, I just forgot to mention that. Okay, gentle gardener, number two. So that's eight, eight, 88. And uh, 666. I walk by faith and not by sight. I am dope as fuck. Wealth 
follows me. And we have dwell on what you love. Pucker up, buttercup. Forgive. Transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level. Deep healing. And then we have star mother. How can you mother yourself? Okay. All right. Let me get a couple charms out. Charms for pile three, please. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot. All right. Keep calm and kill zombies. Let's see. We're all mad here. We have Pisces. We have the word B. So just B. We have never, never give up. We have every journey starts with one step. It takes a big heart to teach little minds. We have after all this time, so that speaks to divine timing. Never, never give up again. Follow your heart. We have these cards, which represents like taking a gamble. Um, find joy in the journey. Strong is beautiful. We have a horse here, like a stallion. So that represents freedom and trust. We also have, okay, we also have Sagittarius, we also have, guess Sagittarius again, we also have dog, a dog here which represents loyalty and companionship, and this trust and love again, and every fair from fair sometimes declines. Okay, so let's get it. We're just going to do it all together. Pile three. All right, so right now you're going through a deep transformation. We have here deep transformation, deep healing. And then we have here, how can you mother yourself? So right now you're being asked to really mother yourself, nurture yourself. That means give yourself the love, the tenderness, the care that you deserve, the nurturing love that you deserve right now. Be gentle with yourself. Nurture yourself. Do the things that feel right to you. If you need to hold yourself, do it. If you need to hug yourself, do it. Tell yourself the affirmations. I love you. I love myself. You know, really give yourself whatever that nurturing love looks like for you, feels like for you. Give yourself that at this time because this deep healing and deep transformation that's happening, that means you're, you're going to need more rest. That means that you're going to need to take the time to really take time for you. So if that means taking the day off of work, if that means, you know, going on a trip, if that means doing things for self-care that feels right for you, whatever it means, give yourself that love and care. Music may also be healing as well because we see with the listening, we have music notes and we have two elephants here. We have two elephants, and you know, for me, elephants, that represents love, that also represents companionship, that represents wisdom, and it also represents, it's like a loyalty there too, okay? And then we have two giraffes as well, okay, and the come together. So this may represent, you know, you and this person coming together, you take that how that resonates, Okay. But with the eight as well, that also represents infinity, which the infinity symbol, which is like infinite love, infinite care. So you take that how that resonates. But we have a lot of double messages here. So like I said before, music may be really healing for you right now. But, um, you know, right now you're being asked to listen and listen to your heart. Listen to what your soul says. Listen to the needs of you right now. You are important. What do you need? You know, ask yourself these questions and really listen to what your soul is saying. Maybe right now you need to take time off from work. Maybe you need to take a break and go for a walk. Maybe you need to get more rest. 
Maybe you need to drink more water. All of these things are going to be essential with your healing because it really helps you to get through that process and it really helps your body because your body is going through a lot when you're doing that healing. With this forgive, I'm going to read the back of this. Of course, anger can always be justified, but then so can forgiveness. Just depends on how much more you want from the adventure. So you're being asked to forgive. And whoever's coming to your mind right now, that's who you're being asked to forgive, okay? You, you use your intuition on that. But it could be more than one person. It could be, and that's a part of your healing process. That's a part of this deep healing that's happening. And I just saw 1111. So you need to forgive. That's very important through this healing process. Forgive the people that you felt did you wrong. It could be a past lover. It could be a family member. Forgive those people and let it go. Because holding on to all that anger, that bitterness and resentment, that's not serving you as well. I walk by faith and not by sight. So you're being asked, and especially here with this... Um, something here every journey starts with one step and after all this time so you're being asked to have a lot of faith and you're being asked to you know start your journey with one step take one step one step take a leap of faith whatever it is whatever is coming to your mind do it okay that's a part of your healing process too and that's a part of the journey but you're also being asked to have faith and to trust divine timing Trust divine timing because that's going to be very important in this journey as well. Wealth follows me. I am dope. Okay, so again, you have the possibility to be very wealthy. But you have to know that. You have to know that wealth will always follow you. Okay, it does seem here, especially from what this person telling their friends, that you may work a lot or you may be, you know, a hard worker or both. So, you know, you have to know that you will always have wealth. You will always be wealthy, you know. So it's, it's about breaking down those self-limiting beliefs and taking care of you and trusting in that process and trusting that you can take care of yourself and still be wealthy because wealth will always follow you. Dwell on what you love. You're being asked to focus on what you love. Focus on what you're passionate about. Focus on planting your own seeds in your own garden. Focus on you. There's a big emphasis on focus on you right now, okay? And focusing on the things that light you up and make you feel good and the things that you love and you're passionate about. Because through this healing process, when you love yourself more, keep choosing yourself, keep nurturing yourself, and focusing on the things that you love the most, that helps you with this healing and that helps you find more of who you are and it helps you to unravel your soul at a deeper level. So you're really being asked to do that, okay? You're really being asked to trust that process and trust that journey. Right now, you may feel like you're on a solo mission. And what I'm hearing is that's okay. Okay, that's a part of this journey. You're coming to this place where you're finding yourself on a deeper level. Remember, with this charm, we're all mad here. That's saying that you're not crazy. We're all, like, we all could be considered crazy. You know, I don't know if there's something within your belief system where, because, for example, when I started going through my awakening, I went through this long period of time of feeling like I was crazy or going crazy. And that was a part of the awakening process. It was pretty heavy and it's intense. And it makes you feel like sometimes you are crazy. But everyone can be considered crazy. I mean, we're not crazy you're just going through this healing and this transformation. So keep that in mind. And so you're being asked to remember not to give up because never give up came out twice. Okay. You know, with this loyalty, when I saw this dog here representing loyalty, this person, they're loyal to you and they're loyal to whatever you have going on in this connection. I just, that's exactly what I heard. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Follow your heart. Again, you're being asked to follow your heart. Follow what you love. Dwell on what you love. Just be. When I see this be like that, be, that tells me to just flow. You have to release more and know how to just flow. Flow with life. Flow with what you're told to do. Flow with the changes. Flow with the healing. Don't force. Flow. Do not force. Just flow. With these cards here, this is representing like gambling. That means take a gamble on something, whatever that 
take one step or every journey starts with a step, you're being asked to gamble. You could be a teacher. You could teach people because it says it takes a big heart to teach little minds. So you're being encouraged to keep going with that and you're being reminded to follow your heart, find joy in the journey, and strong is beautiful. So I really hope that helps Pile 3. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I'm proud of you for showing up for yourself. If no one told you that they love you today, I love you. Thank you again. Thank you again to the Capital LOVE tribe. Please like the video. Please comment below. Let me know how this resonated for you. Um, please comment below. And please share the video. Share the love. Thank you all so much. And I'll see you in the next reading. Bye.